What you guys got another video here for you on how to install Windows 11 on a step-by-step -step guide here. Now, whether you're on a Windows uh, system or whether you're on a Linux-based system, I'll show you both ways on how to install Windows 11 or even Windows 10, the full guide here. So either way, you can use either Windows 11 or Windows 10. So you can see here, we've got a system which has got Linux on it. I'll show you how to do it on Linux as well as Windows. So first you're going to need to download the Windows 10 ISO. You can't download the Windows 11 ISO on Linux because of the Insider program at the moment. You're not inside the Windows Insider program. It won't allow you to download it. So just follow the steps here to download the Windows 10 ISO without using the media creation tool. Once you choose your download, whether it be 64-bit, then you can go ahead and do it. If you've got another computer, you can download the Windows 11 ISO, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So I've got the ISO on my desktop. I'm going to hit the uh, Start button here, and we're going to go to Utilities, and then Disks. You should see it already installed on Zorin here. I'll show you how to install this the other day. You should see my USB flash drive here. Now, if this is on an NTFS file system that is based for Windows, we need to change this, so you're going to need to delete all of these partitions on this USB flash drive if you are on a Linux based system. So you can see I'm just going through the motions here and deleting these and then creating a new ext4 uh, partition. Once that partition's created, you should see something looking like this, which means we do have a partition type of Linux, which means we can now use our uh, Windows. ISO file on this USB flash drive using Ventoy. So you can download Ventoy. This is if you are on a Linux based system. So click on the Linux version if you're on a Linux based system. You don't need to do this on a Windows system. I'll show you how to do that after the Linux based system. Come down the page and then look for the Linux version and download this version. So you can see here, I'm just going to click open here. And you can see we have our file. I'm going to extract this file, go to my desktop, and put it inside my ISO folder on the desktop where I've got my uh, Windows ISO. We can show the files. And there we go. We have inside our ISO image, we have a folder called Ventoy, and here is all of our files. I can now right-click inside this folder and open up a terminal inside uh, the Ventoy Folder. So let me just quickly close all this off here and get this all set up right so I can show you. Right click, open the terminal window inside that folder. We should have a terminal window open inside the Ventoy folder. We can now type out this command and I'll leave a, a link for that in the video description. And basically you type this out and what we're going to do is prep our USB flash drive so we can drop our Windows ISO into the Ventoy folder so it will boot up on that Linux based system. So, this is the command you'll need to type out here something like this. And it should look something like this. I'll put it up on the screen in larger letters so you can see it. There we go. So, I'll leave this in the video description for you. And basically, when we push enter here, we need to put in our password that we created with our account. So, push enter. And you should see now it wants to do a style MBR and it wants to create a, a Ventoy image on that uh, USB flash drive. We need to continue by saying, yes, it will erase all of the data on that USB flash drive. So bear that in mind. I'm going to say yes again. And we can then start creating our Ventoy USB flash drive inside uh, Linux here. Now, remember, all of this is only if you're on a Linux based system but I'll show you how to do it on Windows in a second. Now, if you do have another computer and you don't want to use Linux, you can open up uh, you know, your browser and download the Windows 11 ISO file inside there on, on another computer. So what I'm doing here is dragging the Windows ISO into the Ventoy folder on my USB flash drive. It's that simple. And then we can boot to our USB flash drive and then install uh, our version of Windows via that method. And I'll quickly show you the Ventoy screen so you'll see it and be able to install it. It should look something like this. 
I can click on this ISO and install it. That will be able to install Windows 10 via that method or even Windows 11 if uh, you've already had the download of Windows 11 ISO. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and take a look at a Windows based system and how we can do it there. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get your hands on a Windows 11 ISO or a Windows 10. You can download Windows 11 off the website of Microsoft. I'll leave the link in the video description. You can go here and select which version of Windows 11 you want. We are in the Insider Preview at the moment, but when this comes released to the general public, we'll be able to use the Media Creation Tool to download the ISO properly via that method. But this is the way you're going to have to get the Windows 11 ISO at the moment. And it's all legit from Microsoft. You just put all the details in and hit download and it will allow you to download the ISO here. There you go. There's the download here for 64 bit. Click on this and you should see the download coming down here. That's if you want to get your hands on this. Now, if you've got a Windows based system, you can download this and then use it on Linux, but you don't need to go through all that palaver of doing it inside Linux. You can do it on a Windows based system like I'm going to show you here. So download Rufus. I'm going to download the portable version of Rufus. It's a free tool. I'll leave the links in the video description. Open it up and select your uh, device. You can see here I've got my USB device called Windows 11 here plugged into the computer. This is now a Windows based system we're doing. We need to select the Windows ISO that we're going to be using. So hit the select button and choose your Windows ISO, whether it be Windows 10 or Windows 11, it's entirely up to you. Select this and you can see we are now set to our standard Windows installation. Leave it on there. We can now change the partitions uh, scheme to either GPT or MBR. I'm going to use MBR here and that's suitable for BIOSes or UEFI, uh, CSM. So if you want to do GPT, you can do it's entirely up to you. Then I'm going to give it a volume label and we're going to call this say Win 11, something like this. Leave it on NTFS and we are ready to go. So click on start and this will then prepare a USB flash drive and make that bootable with our Windows 11 on it. It's that simple. So click OK here. It's going to erase all the data on that USB flash drive and put Windows 11 on it. So this does take a bit of time. I'll speed this up. And now we have our Windows 11 bootable media done. It's going to boot into the BIOS here. And I'm going to make some changes here. We need to make sure if we're installed in Windows 11 that you've got a compatible PC. And to do this, we need to make sure secure boot is enabled here. So that's all enabled. And I'm making sure that in the settings here that we have at UEFI turned on and also trust in computing. And we need to make sure our TPM is enabled here. Now, this is an AMD based system, but if you've got an Intel based system, I've made videos to show you how to do this. You can check my playlists out for Windows 11 and you'll see there how to do all this sort of stuff. But that's now set. In the BIOS, we're good to install Windows 11 on this base system. So let's go ahead and sort this out. I'm just going to change the boot order so we can boot to our USB flash drive. I'm going to go ahead and select my USB flash drive here. And this is the one, the SanDisk. So let's click on this one. And basically what I need to do now is save these settings, push F10 and save these settings and reboot my computer. So I'm going to save these and reboot. Once that reboots, you should now see the Windows installation. So first off, we choose your language and basically click on next. So I'm going to select English and click install now, and this will start the installation process. So let that start off. I don't have a product key. I've already got a product key bound to the motherboard on this system, so it will automatically update even though it's a Windows 10 based system I had on here previously. So I'm choosing Windows 11 Pro because that's what was on the system before. It was Windows 10 Pro. I'm now going to select next and go through the custom settings here. You should see a couple of partitions on here. If you do have partitions or other drives, be careful which ones you delete. I'm going to delete the ones which I'm installing Windows on. This had Linux on it. I'm just basically going to delete these partitions here. 
and yours may just have windows on it. You can delete those partitions, select the unallocated space and click next and that will install windows on that drive. You need to make sure you get that part right. Otherwise you're going to end up overwriting your data on the drive. So that will start to get things ready. And now you should have this window popping up here so we can just set up our settings. So let's go through here and set these up. And you can choose what you want to set yours up, but just basically choose your keyboard layout. And then we need to choose our secondary keyboard layout. If we want one, I'm going to skip that part. It's going to go off and check for updates. So I have got an Ethernet cable plugged in, so it will check for updates and see if there's updates available for this installation. And if there is a later version ready, then it will download those. We need to give the PC a name. I'm just going to leave this as is, but you can put a name in here if you wish. So I'm going to just uh, skip this for now and move on to the next step. So here we have our next step, which is how would you like to set up your device? I'm going to be setting mine up as a personal use. So I'm going to select personal use and go next. And then we can now add our Microsoft account. You can see here signing options. If I click on this, it will give me some other signing options. If you've got an account you want to sign into, you can do, or you can select the offline account. And that's what I've selected here. So what is a Microsoft account? It'll go through some stuff here. I'm going to skip this for now. And then what we're going to need to do next is create an account. So I'm going to give this account name. So you can give your account name, whatever you like. I'm going to call this change me. So the person who buys this PC, We'll be able to change it to whatever they like and i'm just going to call it change me here there we go so that's our account name done and we can now click on next and it will ask for a password to be set up and uh, i'm going to be saying next here i'm not going to put a password on because i can let the other person put a password on here i don't want my location uh set so i'm going to say no find my device say no and send diagnostic data back to Microsoft. I'm going to say required only here. This is the minimal requirement that we can do. So click accept and, uh, and that should be done. So inking, typing, I don't want any of that stuff. So click no. This is all the telemetry side of things on Windows. As you know, tailored experiences and diagnostic data again, no. Let apps use your advertising ID. I'm going to say no here as well. So that's all now set up. It's going to check for updates again. And then we're nearly at the finishing post here. So what we need to do is let it finish its thing off. It's found some updates. So it's going to now download these updates and give us the latest version of Windows 11. You might not have this screen depending on whether there's updates available. If there is, it will download them. If there isn't, it will move on to the next step pretty quickly. So I'll speed this process up as to not to bore you and we'll move on to the next phase of the installation so it will say just a moment and then basically it's going to go through a bunch of other checks and setting things up for you and you've seen this screen before on windows 10 so i'll speed this process up and it will take a few minutes as it tells you here almost ready and you should see the desktop screen and you've just successfully installed windows 11 on your computer. Now, whether that computer was a Linux based system or Windows, as long as you create the bootable media via uh, Windows or Linux and you can boot to that, you can install Windows 11 on it and you should have something looking like this pretty straightforward and easy to do. And this PC is now ready for sale. So that's it, really. Now, of course, some situations will change when Microsoft finally release the full final version of Windows 11, you'll be downloading the media creation tool. You can still use this method uh, to install and build your USB flash drives and basically install Windows 11. So not much is going to change apart from the preview inside a build compared to the full final release of Windows 11. And if you're using Windows 10, you would use the same method to install Windows 10 as well. Anyway, that's about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. There's a few new ones on there. So thank you for joining and I shall see you again for another video real soon.